Well, and welcome to Rosslyn Chapel. You can see this lovely, beautiful chapel here that has managed to retain its beauty because it was closed down in the Catholic, uh, in the Protestant, sorry, Reformation, uh, when Catholic churches were normally despoiled, you know, wrecked, altars smashed, statues of saints were torn down. But uh, because Rosslyn was sort of boarded up, basically, um, it's retained all this amazing ornamentation, which, you know, amazes people. Um, it's very intense, I have to say. It's, uh, you know, it's rather like a rich cake. Um, let me show you a couple of things, anyway, around. I hope you're taking in all the uh, ornamentation around me. Um, if I go over here towards the, towards the altar, now you know about, of course, that this church featured in the Da Vinci Code. It's where the film ends, when uh, the protagonist, one of the protagonists, discovers that she is part of the bloodline of Christ and, uh, and has her moments of zen. And, um, but above me here, if you can see, I hope you can see, are these kind of blocks, can you see the blocks in the arches, which represent musical notes. And uh, a guy called Stuart Mitchell and his father, both sadly passed away now, uh, managed to actually write a piece of music based on that based on, on those stone blocks. Though some of them actually date from the 19th century, not the Middle Ages, so we just have to hope that all the notes are accurate. Then, I hope you can see everything behind me. It's a bit of a whistle-stop tour, this. Behind me here is the so-called apprentice pillar. Beautiful pillar, quite unique, very bizarre design. Some people believe it's Viking-influenced. Uh, there is a story that the mason, the junior mason, sorry, who carved it, was killed by the master mason, who was furious that he'd, uh, he'd carved it without his consent. And then, what I'm going to do very quickly now is take you down into the crypt. Well, it's not the crypt, sacristy, actually. Sacristy, I always find that word hard to say. Sacristy. And we we'll go down these steep steps. Very careful. They didn't have health and safety in the Middle Ages. And I'm holding onto a rail, though. Um, and here we are down in... The sacristy. Now, this is very interesting because there are all sorts of strange carvings down here. And a lot of them are five pointed stars, uh, which have all sorts of meaning, uh, representing the five wounds of Christ, representing Venus, the evening star, so on. But the carving that gets people the most excited, I hope you can see this behind me, is this kind of what looks like a tower. Some people say it looks like a 1970s electricity pylon. And there's a kind of cup shape at the top. And my finger's not doing this properly, but there's a cup shape at the top. And there is then a, a star here. I think you're going to have to believe me, uh, which some people believe is the evening star. Anyway, what some people believe is that this carving here is a kind of navigational map or uh, that it uh, represents latitudes. Uh, depicting Jerusalem, Rosslyn, um, let me get this right, Orkneys and Iceland. Uh, and this all relates to the Sinclair family, who were the, the, the family here, and uh, a narrative that they protected the Templars after they were put on trial in 1307, and that they helped them to hide out in Scotland and then make their way to the New World with all their loot and treasure and possibly the Holy Grail. Some people believe that the Holy Grail, I'm leaving the sacristy behind me now, that the Holy Grail uh, was actually here in Rosslyn for a little while. Maybe it's still here. Some people believe it was built as a Grail Chapel specifically. And there are stories as well that Hugh de Payne, the first Templar Grand Master, came here with four trunks of treasure from Jerusalem and he buried them under the nave. And some people believe they may still be there. And that they are sort of held in place, impacted with sand brought from Jerusalem. Anyway, uh, Rosslyn authorities don't agree with that story and they certainly haven't let anybody excavate. So just taking the church Taking the church a bit. You see the ceiling there, very ornate, lovely ceiling. 
as I say, this sort of ornateness, as you can imagine, was frowned on during the Protestant Reformation, which is why the church was closed for a long time. And uh, in fact, I believe it was used as stables under Cromwell. And it only really resurfaced in the 19th century with the kind of Gothic revival, interest in the Middle Ages. Unfortunately, or fortunately, or depending on your viewpoint, there was a lot of restoration in the 19th century. I mean, the, the medieval fabric is still basically here. Uh, hasn't changed that much, but you have to kind of learn to distinguish between the medieval original fabric and some of the uh, 19th century interpretations of medieval. But there we are, you can see it all. You're getting it all there behind me. And if I turn gradually, you then get, you'll get the altar. There's the altar behind me there. Okay, and uh, somewhere behind me is the a prince's pillar. So this, this church, of course, shrouded in mystery and conspiracy theories, all sorts of conspiracy theories, that John the Baptist's head was kept here, that the embalmed head of Jesus was here. Uh, and uh, the official guide was telling me today she gets emails every week, all sorts of stuff sent to her about what Rosslyn signifies, what's hidden here, why are they keeping these secrets, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, regardless, I'd recommend a visit to this place. I'm very privileged to be here at night on my own, a bit spooky. Find out if there's any ghosts in a moment. Um, but, yeah, do come along. It's, uh, you just get to Edinburgh, and it's a um, 20, 25-minute bus ride, or if you're rich, a taxi ride out here. And uh, it's well worth a visit. So I hope you've enjoyed my brief guide to the glories of Rosslyn and over and out.